electric. Welcome back everyone for another energy update video. It's the end of October, so it's time to give you the statistics for the month of October 2022. And today I thought I'd start with this image. This image looking at our sunrise. So this picture was taken at 7.25 in the morning and the sun is just coming up. It is sunrise. Uh, you can see the sun just below the tree line. So it's above the horizon, but I'm not getting any sunlight on the solar panels because of those trees in the way. A month ago, two months ago, the sun was rising much further to the left, more to the east. So our east gable was bathed in sunshine in the summer months. That's all gone now. Now we've got a much later start to the solar day the solar day is much shorter as well as it's setting in the east in the west much sooner and that's the update for september really it's weather related mostly the sun is rising later it's lower in the sky we're getting less solar generation well, I say lower generation, but look at this chart. This clearly shows that we had an excess of solar in the start of the month of October, all the way up to around the 18th, 19th. The yellow below the line, that's us exporting to the grid. The red above the line, that's when we start importing from the grid towards the end of the month. So solar generation wasn't too bad. As you can see from this chart, at the beginning of the month, we were starting to generate 40 kilowatt hours a day. And we were averaging about 22, 23 kilowatt hours a day for quite a large proportion of the month. And it's only towards the end, as you can see, that we started to have days where we had hardly any solar generation. That's just three days there at the end. But we were generating still consistently around 20 kilowatt hours on a good sunny day. The breakdown of that, here's our 3.9 kilowatt array, and that generated 358 kilowatt hours for the month the new solace array that we've got with the east gable panels and the three panels on the garage roof that was 124 kilowatt hours add those together you get 483 kilowatt hours for the month on our solace array finally one more array yeah we've got three solar arrays 209 kilowatt hours from the solar edge array and as you can see here by the comparison to other months from the solar edge much much more than we would normally get in october this is the October comparison with the actual numbers, and 358 is massively more to a really, really healthy month. A lot of people will be screaming global warming, or is it just an exceptional? I don't know, but it's warmer. We're having to cut the lawn a lot more. There's no real frosts, and it's much, much warmer. So we're not using uh, any heating source resources either. So electricity used for heating is down this month too. And this is the combined graph that shows our solar generation going back in time. And it still amazes me looking at this 691 kilowatt hours this month. It's almost like a summer month's generation. It just seems so unreal to have generated that much electricity in October. OK, so if we have a look at the solar edge charts, um, this I find really interesting. The blue is solar generation that I'm consuming. The green is solar generation that I haven't consumed. And the red is import from the grid. And what you can see looking at these charts, which are last October's, is that we're importing quite a lot in the early hours of the morning using the Octopus Go tariff. So that's me recharging the home storage battery, heating the hot water, not recharging our electric car because we didn't have one in October 2021. I'd actually sold my mini electric. So all of these here with the red in the morning, that's charging the battery, heating hot water. But as you can see, not too much. It's only a small amount. Three, four, five, six kilowatt hours is all we're importing. And we still had some decent sunny days. So if we just scroll through those now, one of the things to note looking through last October is on not one of these days did we have red import going on throughout the night. So we didn't run out of battery power. Battery was powering us through the night. Changing the dates to look at this October, now we can start to see the difference. And the first thing to see, no red import at the start of the month. So we're just surviving on solar power and heating our hot water, charging the home storage battery just from solar power during the day. And it, as I said in the beginning of the video, it's not really until about the 15th, 18th. Let's have a look. So yes, the 15th looks like the first day that we imported from the grid. The 19th was the first big day. And then we intermittently import from the grid until the end of the month. So how does that translate across to the actual statistics for the month of October? How much energy did we import and pay for from the grid? 
So October 2021, we imported 88.63 kilowatt hours. It cost us £13.67 on the go tariff. But the interesting bit for me is 6.68 pence per kilowatt hour is what we paid for that energy. 6.68 pence. That was 4.5 pence for the cheap rate overnight and 16 pence for the peak tariff throughout all other hours throughout the peak time of the day that changed for us this september we went up to seven and a half pence which was a 66 percent increase for the cheap rate and we went up to 40 pence a kilowatt hour that's two and a half times the 16 pence that we had before so i'm expecting a bigger change and yes okay we paid more 19 pounds 60 is all we paid in october yeah it was a cheap month wasn't it lots of solar didn't use a lot of heating and we only used 75 pounds 0.71 kilowatt hours not hugely less but again we were charging those electric cars that we weren't doing last year but the average 10.47 so 10.47 i think is a really good result considering that the peak rate has gone up to 40 pence a kilowatt hour that tells me that proportionally the average there 10.47 includes much more of the seven and a half pence a kilowatt hour than it does the 40 pence a kilowatt hour so i'm quite happy 10.47 is the average of what we paid aren't we lucky octopus go is such a good tariff 10.47 pence some people are paying 40 50p at the moment uh yeah thank you octopus for this great smart tariff so with 691 kilowatt hours of generated energy and 75 imported from the grid, what did we do with it all? Well, sadly, we exported 147 kilowatt hours back to the grid. We really just generated more than we needed at the start of October. But later in the month, we started to use it all. So what else did we use the energy for? Well, 92 kilowatt hours went into the Eddy device to heat our hot water. 92 compares quite well to last October. That was 103. More than a 10% saving since we've installed the Mixer G tank. Now, sadly, most of that 10% is just because the Mixer G tank is 10% smaller than the tank we took out. We should be getting more than that. But more about that in the review that I'm going to do of the Mixer G tank itself. I've filmed that. Just need to edit it. On top of the hot water heating, the Mini or Mini and E-Golf now through the Zappi electric car charger, we did 210 kilowatt hours. That compares very favorably to last year where we only used 35 kilowatt hours. As I said, we'd actually sold our Mini Electric. So 210, that's a really healthy number. That's actually the second highest amount of car charging we've done since we've had electric cars. That just leaves the house itself. 334.6 kilowatt hours is what we consumed in the house. That does include the battery recharging. Out of that 334, 75 is my estimate for how much we used for heating the house. 75 kilowatt hours. That compares to last October where we used 90 kilowatt hours and used um, a log fire during October last year as well. This year we haven't done that at all. So the 75 kilowatt hours has gone further this year. Our heating really has improved and I can't wait to share with you when I do a separate video on the air-to-air -air heating system that we've got. It's made a massive improvement to how the house feels, the warmth, how much we can use it as well with a bigger storage battery. There's just so much more flexibility. Our heating has improved massively this year. This has got to be my favourite chart of uh, all of them though. It comes from Home Assistant where each individual device is tracked so I can see each individual device and how much energy we've used. Um, the Zappi on solar we used 172 kilowatt hours. The Zappi on the grid just two down in the sort of mauve colour that was 37.69 kilowatt hours. The Eddy uh, 82.47 that would be the solar and Eddie from the grid that's charging cheap overnight 9.34 so I love this breakdown the Toshiba air conditioning we're using a Shelly power monitor to get that information 32 kilowatt hours then we've got the dehumidifier that was 21.79 kilowatt hours we use that as a heater in our bedroom as well so it uh, performs two functions the TV 14.75 uh, kilowatt hours these are all smart plugs, CASA smart plugs monitoring these. The ensuite, yes, we have a heater in that now. It's an immersion heater inside the radiator on a smart plug, a CASA smart plug. 11.19 kilowatt hours for the ensuite. The cloakroom, 
4.11 kilowatt hours. And then we've got a couple more that we haven't used. The bathroom we haven't used, really it's too small to see. And Charlotte's radiator, she's got so much thermal gain in her room, the sun has kept her room warm. So that's it for the month, the breakdown. There are some devices that I've monitored previously, but I don't have enough smart plugs for, like the e-bike, Charlotte's electric bike. That only uses a couple of kilowatt hours a month. That's really economical. Um, we have had a monitor on the fridge, and that uses between 15 and 20 kilowatt hours a month as well. And then there's the uh, oven. So we've got the microwave, the air fryer, the oven, the hob, all of those things. Eventually, I'd like to be monitoring as separate devices as well. So more smart plugs, more Shelly monitoring. Okay, just a few more stats and bits of information for you. This one's showing the import per day for the month of October. And what you can see, September leading into October, very little grid import. And then all of a sudden, we start importing from the grid. So yeah, it's a really transformational month where we are changing from being self-sufficient with solar power to needing the grid. This chart is showing the day-by-day -day peak value of solar energy as well. So we've got about a maximum of 7.4, 7.5 kilowatts that we see in peak summer periods. But during October, yeah, we're still peaking over 6. So 6.2, I think 6.3 is about the maximum. So we're still getting good generation when it's clear skies. A new piece of data to share with you this month. Now that we've got the Mixergy tank, it records how many litres of hot water we're using. And this month it was 2,292 litres, compared to last month, 2,552. So we're using less hot water in October. Brilliant news. And this nice chart from Victron, that's showing me the state of charge of the battery in the blue band at the top. So the thickness of the band at the top is the top state of charge, how much we charged up to that day. And the bottom part of the band is how low, how low did we discharge the battery down to. The lowest that we put the battery down to was on the, what was that, the 15th or 16th of October, and that was 50%, and we did recharge back to 100%. But as you can see at the very top of the chart, there are one, two, three, four triangles where there are some dips at the very top. We didn't recharge to 100% on four days, so there wasn't enough solar to do it. And talking of recharging the batteries from solar, this is my Victron settings for when we turn the inverter into charging mode. Is at five o'clock every day for one and a half hours, and I've set it to recharge the battery to just 85%. Reason for that is because in October there was enough sunshine on most days to recharge the battery as well. So I didn't need it to 100%. I left a little bit of headroom so that by the time the sun came up, we could add 10 or 20% from solar. As we go forward with November and December, that'll change and I'll bring the time forward all the way to the start of our Octopus Go tariff at 2.30 in the morning and I'll charge it up to 100%. So I'll end the video with this chart using data from October to December last year. It's showing grid import and as you can see, after October we can expect grid import to go up and up and up as we're charging the car, heating the hot water and heating the house from electricity. So our usage is going to increase a lot. That's what we've got to look forward to. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope there's some useful information there. Let me know in the comments what you did for the month and how did you get on. Uh, obviously, I think around the country in the UK, we had a really good October. But I'm very interested in what you think of the heating side of things and the amount of energy you've been using for heating during October. And let's track that going forward. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon. More videos, electric cars, solar panels, home storage batteries, all that great stuff. See you again soon. Bye for now.